Hi, welcome to my workshop. My name's Darren, and this is 3D Prints in the Workshop number 23. And today we're going to concentrate on threads, specifically thread gauges. Some time ago now, I made this little thread gauge here. It was metric on the top and UNC on the bottom. And in both cases, they're coarse threads. Now, the C in UNC gives it away. Uh, the metric, which is metric coarse. Uh, two reasons I did coarse. One, they're a lot easier to print on a 3D printer. But two, in the workshop, they were the only threads I was using. I wasn't using fine threads. But a lot of people on the internet complained and said uh, not only did they want the finer threads, uh, they wanted them clearly labelled as to what the pitch of the thread was as well. And on something this size, there just wasn't the room. So I had a bit of a think and I've come up with this. This is a metric only thread gauge. So I made a much larger one here. This is a 3 to 12 millimetre thread gauge with certainly most of the pitches available in here from 0 0.35 millimetre pitch at the top all the way down to 1.75 millimetre pitch at the bottom. On the side there's a ruler for measuring the length of your bolt. For example this is a 40 mil bolt. And the idea is, is you just put your screw in, screw it into the appropriate hole, and there you go. All right, so this is a six mil bolt with one millimeter pitch thread, and that's how it works. There were a couple of downsides when I made this. First of all, I made it out of solid plastic with raised lettering, but having raised lettering made the whole unit too big. So I was able to shrink it down using engraved lettering instead of embossed. Now the downside of that with just one colour of plastic was it was a little bit difficult to read the different scales without sort of colouring them in with something. So what I've done, let me just grab my light here. I've actually printed it out of clear plastic on the, black, on the back, as you can see, with a thin layer of black plastic on the front. And that allows the light to shine right through the gauge and makes it extremely easy to read. There's two downsides with this. One is that you get a bit of stringing. Let's see if we can bring the light over and you can see that. There we go, you can probably see it in here. There's a bit of stringing going on in there when you print these, which really does need to be cleaned out before you can use it accurately. Now the easiest way to clean it out is actually with a tap, which kind of defeats the purpose of printing it in the first place, but is doable and you end up with a, you know, a nice little gauge. To avoid the issues with the stringing, I made a metric hole gauge instead, so we can just measure our bolt here like that. And that is a six mil bolt. Again, it's only metric. And again, I've made it clear plastic on the back with a layer of black on the front, which makes it very easy to read the scale. But that's just a diameter gauge. To go with it, I designed this. So there you go, metric threads and we just look around until we find a thread on the edge. You can see if I hold it up, we've got threads on the edge here, each a different size, and you just lay your bolt in there until it feels right and you've found the appropriate gauge. There we go, and it is. You can see that meshes in perfectly, and this is a one mil pitch thread. So that's how that one works. And of course, there's different threads on here, all the way from 0.5 to 1.75 mil pitch thread. A lot easier to print, no stringing, and works well. But prints vertically like that, and so it takes a while to print. So I went back to the drawing board, and I came up with, to some degree, what was much of a compromise, but still does everything that I think that most people will need. So we've got from a four mil to a 12 mil hole gauge there, just to tell us the diameter again, six mil bolt. And we have all our pitches arranged around the outside of the little X here or plus or whatever you want to call it. And we just find our appropriate pitch gauge. And so we can see there again that we have one mil pitch thread. This one prints a lot quicker has less of a selection, but easy to store in your drawer or your cupboard or your toolbox, handy to use, very quick to use, as you can just quickly whip it round until you find the appropriate thread. 
After all is said and done, I will honestly probably continue to use this one. It served me well for quite a few years now. It has everything I need. It's compact and really super handy. I don't use fine threads a lot here at home. I do, however, use them at work. So I've made myself one of these and one of these, and I've taken them to work. And I will use them there for when I want to find finer threads. So there's a wide variety of options available here from the big flat one through this little setup down to the more compact little fellas. Again, that one's already available on Thingiverse and uh, Cults 3D, I believe, and PrusaPrinters.org, ready for you to download. I will go ahead and I will pop these ones up as well, and you can choose whichever you want, print them out for your use. Remember that uh, a 3D printer will struggle printing the finer threads here around the three millimeter mark. You will need to use your finer setting on your printer to achieve that. I recommend 0.1. Uh, there is some tolerance built into this, but initially it will be tight. So again, if you've got stringing, you need to clean the stringing out first. A tap is the best way, but you can do it with a bolt. And uh, yeah, it's ready to go. If possible, doing them in the two-tone is a really good idea. It makes them very easy to read. But if you haven't got the ability to stop your printer and change filament, then you can always just color them in with either a darker color marker if you've used a light color or perhaps a yellow pencil or something if you've used a darker plastic. Okay, so that brings us to the end. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now.